house now. Hardly slept. Sold her. She should stop at home, not going work. But do they listen? She doesn't. I should stay at home. No, you shouldn't. Morning, everybody. Hi. Morning, Sal. She's got your bus money and everything. She has. You know what, love? You look worn well out. You want to go back to bed? Do what? Because it won't be sleeping. You know when she does turn up, Rosa, and she just waltzes in like nothing's happened, and she goes, like, oh, have you been looking for me? You are going to kick her out, aren't you? Hey, hey. Let's see her turn up first. Well, she deserves it, causing all this. Anyway, I shouldn't be here. What time's your bus, lady? And concentrate on your schoolwork, try and put everything else out of your mind. Hey, let's hope we get better news today. See you later. See ya. You don't look fit. I am going to work. Sophie, love. Look, you don't know anything about what Rose is up to, do you? Something that she may have said to you and told you that you haven't to tell anybody else? Nothing. Because you can see what it's doing to your mum and dad. I tell you if they was, because I want her back as well. But I don't know anything, honest. All right, love it. I just thought I'd ask. Try not to worry too much, eh? Hi. She didn't say out to you some clever remark about suddenly being rich? No. If anything, she was going on about how broke she was from holiday. You see, none of this makes any sense at all. I hope you're not going on that she's not done it. Where is it? Is a silly girl, not a bad one. She's got 25 grand in the bank, Mum. It's not come from the tooth fairy, has it? Did you know your daughter did the lottery? Well, she bought tickets for the syndicate at work. Which you're a part of, so basically she's robbed you and all. Oh, reveling it, Sophie. Why don't you? No one's reveling in it, Sal. You and Rosie argued with her threatening to leave home. And suddenly there's the temptation of a lottery windfall. Sure, we're all study, worrying ourselves stupid while she's up wiggling and giggling like she's queen of the world. Sophie! Look, I know how this looks, but she would have been in touch. Unless she's had the good grace to feel ashamed. I've checked with the bank. Off the record, some money has been withdrawn from the account since the statement was issued. So much for being ashamed. How much? Well, I don't have details, but it could be enough to travel well away from Manchester. But why without a passport? I don't believe any of this. It's just not rosy. Kevin, you've got to agree with me, surely. Hey, any news on Rosie? Yeah. She's a thieving scumbag who's done a run-up with 25 grand of the lottery winnings from the factory. What? Rosie, seriously? Ask the police. Makes everything you've done look a bit tight. Well, yeah, I'm no longer the baddest kid on the street then. Respect to Rosie. Is this true? Yeah, I didn't think she was bright enough to pull off either. Oh, your mum and dad must be devastated. Yeah. You know, to most people, she'd be the daughter from hell. But to my mum and dad, she's little miss perfect. It's just me they don't bother about. Of course they do. Is anybody ringing to ask where I am? That'll be a no. They probably think you're at school. Rita, they don't care. I always thought Rosie was the selfish one. And here you are playing truant just because you're not getting any attention. Well, don't you think I get from school as well? Oh, how's your sister she back yet? Have they found her? You're so bothered about people obsessing over Rosie, and here you are doing exactly the same. No, I'm not. I didn't think of it like that. Well, maybe you should. I always thought you had a bit more about you, and you playing up just now is the last thing your mum and dad need. Suppose. Get off to school before somebody does notice. Okay. Call in at the cabin later. We'll have a competition. Who can wind Norris up the quickest? I think there's any conclusion we can jump to just yet. It's an obvious conclusion, but we're not allowed to jump to it. <sighs> just check Rosie's MySpace page. Still nothing. I don't know what that means, love. <sighs> Take too long to tell you. Oi! Norris is probably that one. He's full of pictures of lads pulling faces looking drunk or high. But this lottery business... Oh, you could see the police switching off like that. I mean, suddenly she's not a missing person. She's a thief. And can you blame him? Do you know, I hope my mum 
to say something and he bites me head off. All I'm saying is she might have run off with her money. That wouldn't make me Columbo. I'm not allowed to speak. Well, stop provoking me. You think I'm a trophy wife, you do, don't you? I do not. Rosie's safe, you know, Mum. What makes you say that? Because she's my sister. And if anything bad had happened to her, then I'd just know. OK? Sure, you're right, so. Janice. Hey? That was Janice Battersby in that cab. They've let her out, Kev. Sal! Where are you going? What are you doing? What does it look like? Well, don't you? Can we at least talk about it? No. Not unless there's been a terrible mistake and they've got the wrong woman. No, I didn't think so. Listen, you don't understand. Look, I wasn't just arrested. I turned myself in. A young girl's gone missing. Thanks to you, nobody's looking for her. On top of that, you've nicked a load of money off folk who've got as little as you have. No, Roger, please. Look, I'm sorry, Janice. I've just had enough. You can't just walk out on me. Not at a time like this, please, Roger. I thought I knew you. Oh, you do know me. I'm just greedy. And stupid, and I'll never learn. But I love you. Roger, I love you. And I need you. Please don't do this to me, please. You've done it to yourself, Jack. Wrong to feel murderous. Hey, come on. Because I could kill that Janice. I'd love nothing more than to see her face contorting with pain. Contorting all the time with her, isn't it? How could she, Kevin? How could she open a bank account in Rosie's come name on. and? Don't even think about it. Every waking hour, I'm thinking of nothing else. No, she's alive, Kevin. I can feel it. She is? I don't believe it. She sent us a flaming postcard. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> you hear anything? Well, of course, it goes without saying, yeah. And you. Thanks again. Night. Cisco. The Irish police have confirmed that Rosie hasn't entered the country and they're going to liaise with the Hollyhead police and start circulating a photograph immediately. Is that all? Oh, for the moment. I don't know why we bother paying our taxes. I really don't. There's probably nothing else they can do anyway. Come off it, so if they don't call them plod for nothing. What did they say about the postcard? Only that it was a, a promising development. Of course it is, love. I'm going to have a handwriting checked out. Ah, oh, Rosie wrote that. I still don't get why would she go to Wally Ed. It's not like she's got any friends there. Well, she ain't got any friends here. It doesn't stop her getting in trouble, does it? Hey, if you haven't got anything constructive to say, young lady, I suggest you keep it to yourself. So, what happens now? Sit tight and wait. I feel grand, love. Smashing. Oh. This isn't right, I sat here and Rosie. Come on, it's OK. No, it's not, Kevin. I feel useless. Everybody does in a situation like this. Yeah, well, I'm afraid that isn't good enough for me. Yeah, well, there's nothing else we can do. I could go to Hollyhead and look for her for myself. Well, the police said I've done nothing, Kevin, so far. It's early doors. Things are looking up, love. At least you've got a postcard from her. Even more reason to strike while the iron's hot. I'm not asking permission, Kevin. All right, we'll set off first thing. What about my swimming competition? I'm sorry, Sophie, that is the least of our priorities. We've got to do this, love. No, you don't. Dad, please! Look, you can't just go swanning off on some wild goose chase. What happens if Rosie turns up at that door tomorrow? But you're right. We can't just sit here and do no. I'll drive Sally. You stay here and hold the fort till we get back. <coughs> no argument, son. Morning. 
Thanks for some. Have you had your breakfast? No, not yet. Is there any post? Well, that note's this way. You're expecting something? No, not really. I just sent off for some info about swimming clubs. You forgot about my competition? So. Oh, Dad. Look, don't have a go, eh? I've got enough on my plate without you having a pop. So you're not coming now? I'll see how the morning goes. Oh, do you know what, Dad? Whatever. Give your old man a break, eh? It's your mum. Hi, love. Yeah, I'm okay. A bit tired. Any news on Rosa? Come on, Ty. Came as fast as a cub. What's going on? Send it so say swimming finished. Can't remember why. What's up? She's got some freak threatening her. Sophie's neck. If she gets back before me, keep her here. Don't let her out of your sight, right? Oh, your mum and dad will be that proud, Sophie. The place is brilliant. Mm. It would have been first if it went for Olivia Lynchfield and her great massive feet. Mm. <sighs> like built in flippers. You did really well too, Chess. And then the swimming trunk my mum sent them put me off. They were too tired. Oh, Dr. Dad. I could see Maggie Warburton, you know, pointing and laughing. <laughs> Sophie! What were you? I've just come to pick you up. Well, I'm sorry, we should have called to say we were giving her a lift. No, I was only going to get the bus anyway. I wanted to catch a race, I must have got the time wrong. No, typical. Come on, let's get you some dinner. You must be starving after all that swimming. Thanks for bringing her back. No problem. You're not going to ask me how I did. What was that all about? Right, come on, let's get you some dinner now. Come on. You know DC Timmins and... Sorry? PC Hailford. Call me Sandra. All right. Do I cough you out? No, thanks. But you got to be a bit careful about stuff like that, aren't you? Bet some place you've been to is minging. Well... This a... one time, right, I was watching Police Cam Rapture and this right old cop out. Well, he went old, just like been around a bit, do you know what I mean? Anyway, this house that he went to, was so disgusting, he ran outside, threw up on all of the grass, everything, everyone was Sophie. there. Yeah, yeah? Can you let the officers get a word in? Yeah, sure, fire away. We just wanted a chat, really. See how you're feeling? Oh, about Rosa. How do you think? Good, Ted, majorly. You're bound to be. Yeah, like I was saying about this grass anyway, right? I meant the grass like the green kind, not like the snitching criminal kind of grass. <laughs> I should have been more careful. It's got my prints all over it now. So fair. Now it's got hers. Sophie's next. Look, it's a crank. Could be anyone. So we need you to have a think. Has someone been acting strangely lately? Anyone new come on the scene? A stalker? Do you think of that a stalker? I think it's more likely to be someone mucking about. But in case it's not, we want you to keep your eyes and ears open. You see anything suspicious, anything at all, give me a bell straight away. She will do. Sensible girl, aren't you? What more sensible than your sister? You know, just like till Mum gets back, can we keep it quiet? You know, I don't want worrying her out. See what I mean? Look, will you go and show Sandra Rosie's room? Just in case she might see something we missed. It's so different from the other card. The style, message. I put money on it being a hoax. Oh, some sicko. Well, they're out there, unfortunately, toying with people's emotions. It makes no sense otherwise. Unless... What? Unless the car from Holyhead was a red herring and that's real. You said it was Rosie's writing. Yeah, well, if anyone can forge a signature, they can forge 20 words on a postcard. Well, you seem so sure, you and your wife. Well, forgery is better than the alternative. That it is her writing and someone's forcing her to send it. Have you thought about that? You have, haven't you? We've got to consider every angle. So Sally and my dad's gone chasing over there for nothing? Well, Rosie could be in serious trouble. That's why I'm going to ask that you keep a closer eye than usual on Sophie. Why? Because she could be next? Is that a possibility? Well, you can't rule it out. So, wearing this pair of snow washed knees, <laughs> I looked incredible. Every bloke in that snooker all were after me. Seriously. All right. Now, hey, whisper in Jeff, right? 
Being the club runner up three years on the trot. Mm -hmm. That were 1985, 86 and 87. I were barmaid. Anyway, he says to me, I'll have half a mile, love. I said, I beg your pardon. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've been married thrice <laughs> by then. <laughs> Soph. Chesna. Did sell a ring? On the head. It's like peeing in the wind. No, now to most people that's just a metaphor. But to me, it's an awful, awful memory. Oof. Oh! She was stood at the bus stop and I drove through this puddle and splashed her. Ended up taking her back to our house and cleaning her boots. Yeah, and he's not stopped licking them ever since. Yeah, yeah. She was going for a <laughs> job interview. Recognise me from Captain Beaky's. I remember that place. Oof, she didn't have to give me an earful. Yeah, still took it out that night, though. <laughs> Spitting image of those him on back then. Put Hilda's nose right out of joint. Really? Why? Well, she's from Arkwright Street. Had a right mouth on her, and she wasn't taking any of it back then. She just looked straight at Mrs. Oak and said, We can't all live in Tattenhall! <laughs> <laughs> if you don't sleep, Dad, you will die. It's a medical fact. Yes, Doctor. I can look after myself. And Rosette will look at her if she certainly can. Yeah, well, you shouldn't have to. It's my job to look after you. It's the only worthwhile job I've got. Except I couldn't do it. Yeah, but you could. You've been a great dad. When you have kids, you realise nothing else matters apart from keeping them from harm's way. Well, you couldn't do it. I know what Rose is like. She probably just got up and done her one now. Whose fault would that be? No matter which way you cut it, I failed. You ready for off? Last thing you need to do is lose your licence. Just get the box. No, you won't. Nice. You two must have made an early start. It was a waste of time staying in Hollywood. We've had another postcard. What from Rosie? It's threatening me. What do you mean, Kevin? Why didn't you tell me? It said Sophie's next. Oh no, please. Oh, flaming hell! We've been wasting our time in Wales when whoever's got Rosie might be here after Sophie. Why isn't there a police car outside, waiting to frighten them? Sally, calm down. The police think it's a hoax, more or less certainty. But what if it isn't? I haven't let her out my sight. It was a local postmark. They reckon it's someone round here with a sick sense of humour. How could anybody be so cruel? I'd give them cruel if I could get my hands on them. Well, she's not going into school. Do you think it's real, then? Well, how can we take a chance? If someone was going to snatch her, they wouldn't send a postcard, would they? Putting us on our guard. Look, I can check it in. Make sure she gets there okay. All right, look. Make sure your teachers are aware. And don't go on your own anywhere. Okay. Only if you're sure, though. Well, we can't keep you locked up here all day, can we? No alarms. Have when Johnny blew up a plastic bag and burst it. You probably still say out. And Chess, threw himself on top of me. Like they do in the films, you know, with the present. Yeah, well, they don't say lying on them, do they want the dangers over? I said sorry. Well, at least somebody's had some fun out of all of this. Like whoever sent that postcard. They probably didn't think how upsetting it would be for your mum and dad. I'm me. I'm not being threatened. It's well freak the teachers. They told us all to be watching out, you know, when they were hanging about and all. Yeah, it's the first time Bonehead's ever spoke to me. I didn't even think he knew who it was. You shouldn't talk about the headmaster like that. I think he's speaking to my mum anyway, about keeping me off school till our rosy turns up. Well, that's a bit extreme, that. I don't want to stay off school that long. Not really. Well, you're putting on a good front and not seeming too scared. I don't know if I could do that. I don't want to worry everybody. The one thing that puzzles me is that other postcard was in Rosie's handwriting and it was posted in North Wales and yet this one, Weatherfield, and Rosie didn't send it. Whoever's got a might have come back might be watching me right now. Well, we don't know that anybody's got her. There's something about that card that's not right. 
come and go home. See if anyone's there now. Yeah, sure. The sooner we get you home, the better, yeah? Let me know if there's any developments. Yeah, thanks for the lift. No problem. Just like a change, being the centre of attention. Yeah, well, I'd rather not be. My fit means I'm in danger of getting kidnapped. Oh, I really don't think whoever sent that postcard's going to do that. Still, at least you're getting lifts to and from school. Your own bodyguards. Pity it's putting more pressure on your mum and dad. Yeah, well. See you later, yeah? I'll be there for you again tomorrow. Oh. Evening. Oh, hiya. You okay? Yeah. Fine. Sophie's been telling me all about her day. Everything all right. Do you want a beer? Why not? You don't mind it yourself. I know it's a bit early. I think I'll join you. We've got any banker in. What? Yeah? Do you know, everywhere I've been today, Kevin, all anyone wants to talk about is Liam Connor, not a mention of Rosie. Oh, it was bound to happen. I know it sounds awful, but I just want to shout at them. I've got one daughter missing, a one being threatened. Where the hell have you been? I'm starving. It's been a really bad day. Sorry. Ah, uh, when did you buy this? Today. It's fresh girl's finest. You have a little steel to me. I'm wearing the hobnobs. Oh, I forgot. It's been mad out there today. Hmm. Well, yeah, I can imagine. You will not believe what your sister's done. What, held a candle at vigil for me? No. She's been sending postcards to your mum and dad saying she's next. She's done what? Your poor mum and dad are worried sick. Think you've been nabbed by a psycho. I'm not a psycho. It was just a moment of madness. You bundled me into a car and you've took me to a weird house. It's only me grands. You've locked me in a grubby attic room. Hey, it's very comfortable, is this? It's got en suite. But its state agent told me grand she'd get 300 a month if she rented it out. I'm being held against my will. I know. This whole thing is highly regrettable. I'm so sorry. I've been staring at the walls all day. Dreaming of those biscuits. But I'll bring you two packs when I come tomorrow. No, in fact, I'll do better than oh, that. Oh, you'll let me go home. Please, please let me go home. Now. Just whatever point you were trying to make, you've made it. I would love to let you go, Rosie. But I can't. I will go and find you those biscuits. There's a garage a couple of miles away. I was a Jaffa cake lad myself. Used to nibble all the biscuit from the outside, then pick away the chocolate. You were left with this orange jelly just melting on your tongue. What are you telling me for? I don't know why you're bored. There's plenty here to read. What, J.D. Salinger? Thomas Hardy? I want the Heat magazine! Oh, hello! But I'm not buying you one of those magazines. Besides, if you actually read Catcher in the Rye or Tessa the Durbervilles... Oh, is that you why you abducted me? So you could complete my education? I prefer it if we didn't use the word abduction. Fine. Kidnap me then. I told you to leave. If you just done what I asked in the first place... You can't! to live. It's a free country. Look, I'd better go. Fizz will be wondering where I am. Yeah. Just like my mum and dad. 
will be wondering where I am. Thing is, if it is an ox... There's no ifs about it, as far as the cops are concerned. What kind of a person would do a thing like that? I don't know. You know it has to be somebody who knows Rose is missing, but why put us through this after everything we've been through? They could see us now. The worry and the hurt they put us through. But I can't believe anybody around here would do a thing like this. Well, it's been in the papers. It could be anyone. Can I go and listen to my music, please? Yeah, of course you can, sweetheart. Mom? Dad? Hey, Sophie. Come on, what's happened? You look satisfied. Oh, don't be in love. There's nothing's going to happen to you. It's all that talk before. Scared her out of her wits. It's not that like I'm scared of. It's what you two are going to do to me when you find out. Find out what? What are you talking about? <laughs> it was me that sent the postcard. <laughs> Well, you will be. Let's just stay calm, eh, Kevin? Well, we've all been through hell because of her. I know. And I want to know why she did it. I don't know. Was it meant to be a joke? No. No. So you weren't going to think it was a psycho on the loose, did you? No, I was just jealous, I suppose. Jealous? Don't be ridiculous. Why would you be jealous? Because she's always center of attention. You get jealous of your brothers and sisters because you've got a bigger bedroom. <laughs> Not because they've disappeared. And all everybody's talking about is Rosie being missing and you felt left out. I can't believe you're even trying to justify what she's I'm done. I'm not justifying it, Kevin. I'm just praying she didn't do it out of spite. Unless, of course, there is a psycho on the loose and she lives under this roof. I didn't mean to rain everybody. How do you expect us to feel, eh? <laughs> Write a postcard to your mum and dad. What do you want to put? Anything. Just a few words of comfort to defuse this situation. What, and you're actually going to send these? Hmm. I don't know what to write. Well, just put, um, don't worry, we'll be in touch. That'll just make him worry even more. Okay, how about... Needed some space. We'll phone soon. How about locked in John Scrum's attic? Please rescue. The bottom line is, I developed it, an unhealthy fixation with you. <clears throat> I don't mean like that. Uh, good job. Have I laid a finger on you since I brought you here? No. No. And I never would. Yeah, well, you better not. I'm just saying... You're not in any danger. And I will let you go. My life was spiralling down the plug hole. And I blamed you. Well, that's a bit unfair, isn't it? Yeah, but the trouble is we're here now. Once I let you... It's going to be the end of me and Fizz. Well, she's going to find out sometime. The day I brought you here, I was still reeling from Fizz dumping me. She said she could never forgive me for what I'd done with you. Yeah, but that isn't my fault. Look, I moved on ages ago. When I went to work that night, I was just driving around. I felt like just putting my foot down, driving as fast as I could. Look, if you've got issues, see a shrink, get some pills. You know, it's that callousness, that lack of feeling for others, that's what bugs me about you. <laughs> well, I am sorry if I'm not oozing empathy over your broken love life. Do you know what the definition of a psychopath is? No. Somebody without a conscience. I think that describes you better than it describes me. That's why I couldn't just drive away when I saw you that night. I mean, I'd warned you to leave last time, and there you were, just strutting about, moving from bloke to bloke. You know nothing about my life. When I saw you coming out of that club, 
Something just came over me and felt like I was a teacher again. Like I caught you smoking, marching you to the head's office. Only it wasn't the headmaster's office, was it? And I haven't done anything wrong. The minute I got here, I knew it was a mistake. I was terrified. No, you're not the only one. That's why I scarpered. I spent the night hammering on the door, screaming for help. I couldn't bring myself to come back. I was so freaked out. Yeah, well, think how I felt. Then when Fizz told me she wanted to get back together, I couldn't believe my ears. I was so happy. Then it struck me. I thought she won't be so keen when she knows what's in my grand's attic. You can't keep me locked up here forever. You have to let me go. I'm desperate to let you go. Well, why don't you just do it? Why did I have to go to work that night? Me and Fizz could be so happy. Well, maybe you still can. No, I've blown it big time. Well, look. The longer you keep me here, the worse it's going to be. The police must be looking for me. You're right. I'll talk to her tonight. She'd be devastated. It will destroy her, but I have to do it. What, so you'll, you will do it tonight? Promise me. I promise. John? I just wanted to say thank you. What for? For encouraging Sophie to come clean. Oh, I was right then. Yeah, she's just told us now. Feeling a little bit left out, I suspect. Yeah, something like that. 63 shopping days to Christmas. Can't wait. 62 to Rosie's birthday. She'd put us out of our misery on her birthday, wouldn't she? I think Rosie will have amnesia. Oh, not now, Sophie. Well, she could have fell and banged her head. I've been in an accident. Nothing serious, but just not remember who she is. Eat your breakfast. And lost her ID, and that's why she's not been in touch with us. It's about as much use as you sending a postcard. Don't, Kevin. Dad. I said I was sorry. Yeah, we know. Why don't you come and have some cereal? That's better. <sighs> £2.90. Normally I'd wet me whistle with a plain old flask of tea. But hey, a full day's flogging is akin to running a marathon. We must treat it with the respect it deserves. I think 26 miles would be easier than flogging two bags worth of Moroccan slippers. Oh, enough with the negativity. Now just stay focused on the prize. Come on. How's she doing? Your mum said she's dead to the world. I bet she wishes she was. Poor man. Sleeps Maria's only respite. When she wakes up, she'll have one glorious nanosecond of thinking her life's still in one piece before reality bites. Horribly true, John. Your mum says they've not had two words out of her since they arrived. I think she's still angry with him for not going to the wedding. They were on a cruise. You sent a telegram. <laughs> Dancing with the captain while your daughter's plighting her troth. I'm less than impressed. Don't tell Dot I said that. Dear. <clears throat> there you go. Oh, that is one of the most romantic things ever. Hmm. Do you fancy escaping for brekkie? My shout. Oh, I can't. My grand's cat needs feeding. Bits of DIY that won't keep, sorry. You're dead beautiful, aren't you? You're the one who's doing the hard bit. I just put my arm round her and crack open the handy handies. It's not a lot to say, really. Oh, it'd be nice to get away somewhere, wouldn't it? Me and you in the wide blue yonder. Mm, and a box of tea bags and a travel kit. Oh, you pensioner. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Do you? Yeah, even more than first time round. That's if I ever stopped. You can't just turn it off, can you? 
<laughs> yeah, you definitely look more confident now. You're like a W-O-M-A-N. Give over. <laughs> you do, though. Look at the smirk on your face. You're so loved up. As if. <laughs> Did your dad know? Oh, yeah. Just told him straight, you know. Dad, I'm in a sexual relationship. He was completely fine with it. Said all the condoms were on the house and he signed over three shops to me on the spot. Ask a stupid question. Dad is too wrapped up in Tara to clock what I'm up to. Just as well. <laughs> Cheer for top of the morning. He's got a date with Tara. Uh, ears. Uh, if you don't want me to hear your phone calls, I suggest shutting your bedroom door. Or lowering your voice by a few decibels. Is there any way to speak to the editor of the MABN newsletter? Oh. Ooh. Ooh. I would take Tara out for a bit of Midwell cuisine if I were you. Yeah, it looks a bit cheapskate to cook on your first day. Mm -hmm. Oh, please. We should make a night of it. Well, who's having a party? No, as if. Hey. What? I've got a mate coming round. We're going to do homework and stuff. The fine mate. I come more cosy every time I take Michael out. No, oh, thanks, Kurt. It's no bother. You're missing Liam, I know I like you, pal. Missing your master, eh? Of course he is. Mm. Might have known you'd be worrying about the dog. She didn't mean that. She did. I've done all your cupboards, Maria. All the windows on the inside. I'll put the hoover around, eh? And get a tin of salmon for when... Liam's mum and dad come over. Do they like salmon? Everybody likes salmon. Yeah. I'll go and get that, love. And a loaf. Um, nice and crusty. Um, should we get a cake? Yeah, why not? How about some party poppers and balloons while you're at it, eh? I'll come with you, dad. Come on, Oz. It's Ozzy, and he's stopping here with me. Ozzy, come here. Come here. Bye. No way! No way! Did you try and talk to her? You promised! Yeah, I know, I know it's disappointing. You're a psycho! You're a psycho and a liar! Now, come on, against my better judgement, I did buy a celebrity magazine. Like that is gonna make it any better! I'm gonna need to shrink till I'm 70! You're tougher than you think, Rosie. You're Teflon coated. Your poor parents aren't, but you'll always be okay. Do I look okay? You look better than I feel. Mr. Rochester's wife was locked in an attic. And she went completely doolally. Well, she was doolally long before they put her in the attic. But I am glad you've been reading Jane Eyre. Yeah. Well, it was either that or self harming. Now, have you taken your vitamin D capsule? In the absence of sun, you need it. You weirdo. What the hell did I ever see in you? I asked myself the same question. You need to look up promise. As soon as I've spoken to Fizz, then I'll sort it. Oh, yeah, right. Look, I'm trying to keep all the plates spinning. Fizz has got her hands full looking after Maria. Maria needs Fizz and Fizz needs me. Yeah, and I need to go home. Why? What's up with Maria? Did she break a nail? Her husband's been killed. What? Out on a stag night. Liam's dad? Liam? See? Not everything in life revolves around you, Rosie. Better? A place for everything and everything in its place. Everyone fancied him. Even my mum. Mm. You need to join the dots more. What? In life. You don't make the connections between cause and effect. Liam is lying cold on a slab. A face that says four is inappropriate. Is abduction appropriate? I've not abducted you. I've ring-fenced you. I'm locked into cause and effect. Now, how am I spelling effect? I don't care. A double F or E double F? A. E. 
Oh, I'm so glad. I know that. Now, can I go home, please? I went to the pictures where the sound effects affected my hearing. Being locked in an attic had a serious effect on me psychologically. Facetious to the last, and its effect. What do you mean, last? I oh, don't act frightened, Rosie. I'm more frightened than you are. You're the most terrifying thing I've ever encountered. Yeah, well, wait till you're banged up in prison. Now that will be pretty scary. You'll probably get an extra year for every day you've kept me in here. <laughs> Please don't cry. It's nearly over. You're never gonna let me go. I have to explain this to Fizz. She needs to know what went wrong. Oh, can't you just write to her from prison? She won't be tying yellow ribbons around all the trees. What are you on about now? I'll be back tonight. Or the latest first thing. John! Look, I'm sorry. It's all gonna work out. You have to let me go now. Right this minute. You just go and tell Fizz, and I'll go home. And I will not even mention your name. I will never tell anyone. I'll never tell them. I promise. You and I have somehow managed to wreck my life. I won't tell anyone. I love Fizz. She means everything to me, and I don't use that phrase lightly. But I'll sit her down tonight, and I'll try and make her understand. I'm a big part of why you're in this mess. Fizz will totally get that. You make it sound so easy. I've just got faith in you. That's all. If anyone can make her understand, you can. You're an English teacher, John. You've just got a way of making people understand anything. This is not about selling it to her, spinning it. This is about truth, heartfelt feelings. Yeah, I, I know. Oh, I'm really sorry. Will you tell tonight, though? Yes. Uh, and then you'll let me go? Yes. Any news on your sister? Um, well, the police are a bit worried because she hasn't touched her bank account and apparently she's got some money in it or something, so they're a bit worried why she's not took it out. I don't know what she's living off. Oh, I'm sure she's fine. Hey? Yeah. She's very resourceful. Oh, I bet he's still in the bath. Chesney! Don't worry. I'm sure she'll be home soon. Look, by that postcard, I was stupid to send it. Hey, we all make mistakes. How's your mum and dad? Are they okay? They were sick. Yeah, of course they are. Sophie, it'll be five minutes. Do you want a drink or something? Uh, no, thank you. Right, I'd better get off. Hey? I told you before, I've got to see you the cat. I thought you said you'd get a lawyer to look after the cat. Yeah, but I've got to take food over and stuff. I can't expect him to shop for cat food. Mm. Besides, I know what she likes. I'll be as quick as I can. We have to leave at two. I know. What's that? Food. There's been a change of plan. Oh, I'm sorry, I know this keeps happening, but this time I promise it wasn't my fault. Oh. Fizz has arranged holiday for us. I'm sorry, I have no idea. It's only a week. A week? Look, <laughs> I've got you plenty of food in and drinks too. Uh, I've got you sets of those pasta salads that you like and the sell by is not until the 30th. I don't want pasta salad. I just want to go home. I'm sorry. You used to like me. I got you fizzy water 
An orange and mango juice. And I really like you. More than anyone I ever went out with. Three different cheeses. I've got your grapes. Selection of crackers. We used to be good together once. Don't you remember? Rosie. Well, I've not forgot. I'll never forget. We could be good together again if you want. Stop it, please. I would do anything you want. Don't you remember what it was like between us? Yeah, I remember exactly. And that's why we're in this mess now. And you thinking you can just flirt your way out of here isn't helping us one little bit. I don't know what you want! I just want to go home! It's only a week. You'll be fine. What are you doing? What's your pin number? They should lock me up. And how are you going to rob me? I need your pin number. Well, Tom! Is this it? No. Fizz does the same thing. Do you not trust yourself to remember a four-digit number? I can't believe you're going to take my money. Now, should I take out 50 or 100? What do you think? Why are you taking my money? It's not for me. The police are suspicious because you haven't taken any out since you went missing. And maybe, if your mum and dad see you taking some cash out, then they won't worry. What, so you're going to take it out? Pretending to be me? No. The cash points have CCTV. It's too risky. So what are you going to do? I don't know. I'll think of something. Yeah, you keep these. Do you know how much interest you pay on store cards? Well, I could always take it out. Then, then everyone would know I was okay. You could just take me into town and then bring me straight back here. Do I look like I was born yesterday? Look, do you want to get out of this mess or not? Yeah, I do, but not throw myself into an even bigger mess. John, I will do anything. I will say anything if you tell me to. You are the cleverest man I know. Surely if we just put our heads together, we can work out a way so we both can get what we want. Away. I'm gonna be on my own for seven days. I'm perfectly safe here. Yeah, but I'll have no one to talk to. Listen, John, I know I messed up things before for you and Fizz. And now it's just like I'm doing it again. I have been doing a lot of thinking in here. I was so stupid before. I thought it was fun to flirt with you. I wanted to prove I could make someone like you be interested in someone like me. But then I just couldn't stop and I ruined everything. It wasn't all your fault. I like Fizz. You and her make a great couple. You deserve to be together. What if I'd known how she felt before? John, you can still have this. This does not have to be the end. I spoiled things before. I can make up for it now. Let me out. You and Fizz go on holiday together. I'll stay here, and then while you're away, I can go home. I'll just say it, I'm went away to teach my mum and dad a lesson. <laughs> They'll be so glad to see me. They will believe anything. No one ever need know what really happened. So did you get... Okay, I met a bloke. We went off together for a few weeks. We fell out and he went off on his own. He went to Ireland from Hollyhead. That's where you sent the postcard from. We can work out the perfect story. All the details. And you'll be miles away. No, it won't work. It will work, John. We can make it work. Why would you do this for me? Because I want to get out of here. I can't trust you. John, please! No, I can't risk it now. 
We'll talk about it when I get back off our day. I've got to go. But, I swear, you can have this, and you can trust me. We'll see. I will make you trust me. Yeah, as soon as we get back, we'll sort this out, okay? Right, okay. I'm just feeling hungry. Can I have one of those pasta salads, please? Um, yeah, I'll get you one. Oh. 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 Rosie! 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 Come on! Look, the doors and windows are all locked. She can't get out. I promise, as soon as I get back, we can sort this out. Rosie! Oh, come on, Rosie! Rosie! <laughs> make me sick. Look at him. I think they're the only ones who got a right to grieve. What am I? Just irrelevant. You know, if Liam was alive, he'd have gone in there and told him... No, 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 no. Listen, listen. Think about his poor mum, yeah? The world's come crashing down. <laughs> it? Come on. But we loved each other. Right. Come on, let's get you on, me. Rosie! Rosie! anything like that again. It gets you nowhere. Please, John. Please. I will do whatever you say. Please, John. Please don't leave me. Please, just try to calm down. No, please. Please, John. Please don't leave me. John, don't go. John, please. I'm sorry. You be getting ready for work. I'm not going in. Oh, come on, you said yourself. It's better to keep busy. Yeah, well, I've said a lot of things, haven't I? Like she'll be home soon. She might never come home. Hey, don't say that. Can't carry on pretending, Kevin. I'm trying to fool myself that if I carry on as normal, everything will be all right. Some picture of her. I'm sure I could scan it on the computer and we can make missing people posters. It's not a bad idea, that. Well, yeah, if we printed enough off, we could go into town and put them in pubs and places. Yeah. So go on then. Go and get ready. The sooner we start, the better, right? <sighs> what would I do without you, eh? <sighs> Ha <laughs> ha! 
and it turned out really well. Is that from Rosie? Yeah, it just came. What's it say? Mum and Dad, please don't worry about me. It's been a great time with Rosie. What's she doing in Dewsbury, for God's sake? She could be travelling. What would she be doing there, though? Unless... What? Nothing. What? No, I don't want to think about it. What, Kevin? What if she has been kidnapped? Abducted? I don't want to know. Whoever's got her... Why would anyone kidnap Rosie? We haven't had a ransom demand. What would we pay it with if we had? We haven't had one. She's not been snatched. Well, what if it's some fella and he's got her? Shut up! He could be sending these to put us off the scent. It's her handwriting, Kevin. Wake up. What if she's being forced to do it? Or what if... What, look, listen, no one's touched the money in her account for weeks until the last few days. What if it's a setup to make us think she's alive when she's not, when she's... And all this time she's been dead. <sighs> Sal! Sorry, love. We've got to talk about this. And it is important. I'm sorry. We're getting cards from all over. And we know she's not got any money. Of course she's not got any money. She's dead, according to you. The cards say she's okay. And it's her writing. And yet she's not picked up the phone. We've not spoke to her to know that she's okay. The cards? Forget the cards. Why is she not phoned? Well, then she's been abducted. Sal. The kidnappers doesn't want her anywhere near her phone in case she lets the cat out of the bag about where she is. Sal, well, listen. The cards. She could have wrote them. Before she died. Oh, so he's killed her. But you just said yourself there's something not right about the cards. I didn't mean. I'm phoning the police. <laughs> Be strong, Sal. Well, you just tell me that some madman has killed our daughter like weeks ago and you tell me to be strong. But it's just a thought, okay? You've got a twisted mind. <laughs> well, it's all twisted. It makes you twisted. Please, please. 